In this video, we're going to look at how to build forms with PowerShell Universal Dashboard inside PowerShell Universal. So uh, this functionality is uh, available in all versions, including the free version. So let's log in, um, and the default username is admin and any password. Um, we're going to go over to the dashboard uh, page here. And you can see this is what the dashboard page looks like. And in the top right, you're going to have a Create Dashboard button. Uh, from here, I can just name my dashboard. This can be any friendly name that you want. And then the URL to the dashboard. This particular URL is the URL you're going to visit to view your dashboard. You can also um, just kind of remove that uh, string completely. And then instead of going to the admin page when you go to the, uh, the root of your website, you're going to go to your dashboard instead. So let's do that. So now I have a dashboard that is that has been created. Um, and uh, it's not running, but I can click the info button here um, to view my dashboard code. So here's all the script for my dashboard. Um, and then I can start my dashboard. And that's going to actually start a PowerShell process and run this particular uh, dashboard script. And then I can click view to actually go and view my dashboard. You can see here it's just the kind of default dashboard uh, that has hello world, a button that you can click, and uh, that's the script uh, to create that dashboard. Now that we have a basic dashboard created, let's actually create our first form. So the idea with a form is that it's just uh, an input uh, box, more or less, uh, that you can allow users to input all different types of data via different controls inside PowerShell Universal. So this is a basic new UD form command. And then the content parameter accepts a script block that's going to contain all the content for this form. So this is what it's going to actually look like to the user. So in this case, this form has two fields. It has a uh, text box field and then a checkbox field. And then we've set the IDs to uh, text, uh, text field and check checkbox. Um, and then from there, uh, we have another parameter called onSubmit. And on submit is the script block that's called when the actual user clicks the submit button to um, enter this form data. Inside my on submit, I'm actually calling show UD toast, which is just going to show a little pop up with the data for this particular form. Uh, the data is sent back in this event data um, object or variable. And then each one of the uh, properties that were specified in this form are available inside the toast here. So let's save this. Um, and since I don't have auto reload on, I can just stop and start my dashboard so that it reflects the changes. And then I can click view to actually go out and view the changes to my dashboard. And now you can see a very simple form. Uh, we don't even have labels or anything on this, but we have uh, two input fields. And if I were to just input that data and click submit, you're going to see these two little pop ups in the top right there. And uh, those are the show UD toast calls that are being submitted. Um, and in this case, uh, that is just the event data that we've entered into those into this particular form. In addition to the basic controls of text box and checkbox, there are actually a bunch of different controls that you can use inside a UD form. Uh, auto incomplete, date pickers, radios and select drop downs, slider controls, uh, and even an upload control for uploading files. So. Um, all of these controls can be put inside this content block, and then you can customize each one of those controls based on the parameters that are available for that, that particular control. So uh, if I wanted to, for example, add a, uh, a label um, to this text box, I could call this you know, first name, and I could call this uh, checkbox, oops, label uh, checkbox. And now when I save this particular uh, form or dashboard, what's going to happen is it's going to update uh, the dashboard. And what we're going to see here is a uh, first name label and a checkbox label. So you can just customize each one of these um, kind of components uh, as you see fit inside the content, um, the content block here. And what's pretty cool about uh, new UD form is you aren't just limited to uh, putting in controls. So like uh, input controls, you can also do things like other controls that are not input controls. So for example, if I want to put some typography, so enter some data in the form. Um, if I save this um, and reload my dashboard, you're going to see that it's going to update that to include that little bit of text. And that's not going to affect the form at all. So I can actually go out and submit things into that form still. 
So you can actually uh, go even a little bit further because you can uh, edit forms to include things like formatting. So I have a form that I've typed up here and in this form what it's actually doing is it's using the uh, formatting controls to actually lay out this particular control. So as you can see I have a new UD row um, and then I've specified some columns and then in my, my left column I'm going to have the first name and then the last name um, and then I'm going to have a text box kind of outside of a row and then I'm going to have another row that has two more columns. So you can nest your um, input controls like this um, inside things like uh, formatting components. And what that's going to do is lay out the form a little bit differently. You can see that now I have two columns. Um, this one just kind of is by itself. And then I have another two columns. And that's not going to affect the input at all. So I can still input things. You can still see the, the pop-ups on the right-hand side here. So uh, you can kind of put whatever you want inside a form. So that's pretty cool in terms of customizing the look and feel, adding um, some additional information into your form. You can even put things like pictures or uh, that kind of thing um, directly inside your form. In addition to being able to customize the input of a form uh, in terms of the content uh, and the input controls and that kind of thing, you can also uh, kind of return uh, controls from a form to display on the page after the form has completed doing whatever you want it to do. So in this example, I have a simple content with a text box. And then in my um, on submit, I'm not actually doing anything except returning a new UD typography with the text that was entered in the text field. So what you could do here is inside your on submit, if you wanted to, you could you know call it to a REST method or a database call, um, create something in some service uh, right here. And then um, afterwards, display either some progress or some result of the, um, the form being submitted. So if we save this and restart this dashboard, uh, what you'll see is a basic dashboard with a simple uh, text box. And I can say, hello world. And now it's going to execute that form and then just return that control back to me. So I could return any control I like from here. Uh, in this case, I just returned some text. But you could also return things like you know a chart or a table based on some uh, filtering controls uh, and that kind of thing. Forms also support validation. So in addition to the content and the on submit um, or, uh, script blocks that you can specify, you can also specify an on validate script block. So this script block is called whenever there are changes made to the form. Um, and in this case, we have a single text box. And what this is going to look for is to make sure that uh, the text box has um, data in it. So it's checking for null, and it's checking to see if we have an empty string. And that's just going to return a validation error uh, based on that particular condition. So inside here, you can actually go and check uh, whatever property you'd like. So if you have multiple properties, check, check boxes or drop downs, that kind of thing, you can do additional validation um, inside of here. And then you can just uh, check pretty much the event data um, variable is going to provide you with uh, the same thing it would provide inside the on submit where you have properties for each one of the uh, form fields that you've included inside the content. So let's see what that looks like. Um, since that first thing is required, you're going to see that it is required. If I type anything in here, it goes away. Uh, but if I were to delete this, it's going to say that it is required. Um, and additionally, you can see that the submit uh, icon here or button is um, disabled. So I can't submit this form without doing the required um, changes to the form. And then now I can click submit and you can see that the form is um, submitting and uh, popping up my toast. Sometimes you'll have forms that have long running processes running inside their on submit. While we suggest running long running processes in something like universal automation, sometimes you have something that takes a couple seconds that you'd rather just run inside a universal dashboard. Uh, what you can do here uh, is use the on processing script block or parameter of UD form to actually show a control while the on submit is running. So in this example, I have a single text box and then I have the on submit that has a start sleep in it for a couple of seconds. And then it's going to show the toast of the content of the form uh, after that couple of seconds is over. What I've done is I've actually set up an on processing script block that has a uh, UD typography and progress bar um, showing when this uh, submit is running. So if I click view, that is going to look like 
uh, this. I have a simple text box, and if I do this, you can see now it's showing the uh, kind of loaded dialog for that form, and we got our uh, toast after those three seconds were up. Um, one really cool thing that you can actually do to make this a little uh, more interesting as it's loading is you can update the progress processing um, components as things are processing in your on submit. So here is an example of a little more complicated version of uh, kind of a loading dialogue. So in my on processing, what I'm actually doing is I'm setting up a session variable uh, called output. This is going to contain information about uh, the current status of what's running inside my on submit in UD form. I then have a new UD dynamic, which is a dynamic uh, region, and uh, its ID is set to output. From there, inside my dynamic region, I have a UD typography with a text, um, a text parameter set to that session variable. Inside my on submit, what I'm doing is I'm actually sleeping a bunch of different times, and with each like step inside my on submit, I'm updating the session output variable here, and I'm putting in a new kind of step that we're taking inside our on submit. From there, I'm calling sync UD element on the output dynamic region, and what that's going to do is it's going to reload that dynamic region with uh, the new text that I just set. So let's look at what that looks like. So now if I stop and start this, I click view, and it's going to load up my dashboard. And now what you're going to see is you're going to see that the text is going to change as it kind of transitions through the different steps inside my dashboard. Uh, so you can have all kinds of different kind of progress things uh, set up. It doesn't just have to be text like it did here, but you could also do you know percentage of a progress bar or showing different images, that kind of thing. In this video, we went over the various features of UD Forms or Forms inside PowerShell Universal Dashboard. You can download PowerShell Universal Dashboard from the Iron Man Software website at ironmansoftware.com slash downloads. All the functionality that was shown in this video today is uh, available in all the versions of PowerShell Universal, including the free version.